country. And she is the youngest goal getter in NWSL history. So at what age did you you know you this is what you wanted to be? You wanted to be a professional footballer. And then at what age did it set in, hey, this is a legitimate reality for me? By the time I was seven, I had kind of like created my goals. Like, I want to be a pro. Like, this is what I want to do. I love it so much. You know, like, I want to be the best player in the world. Like, that's when I kind of like created that in my mind. And by the time I was... 11, 12, 13, like those couple years of like committing to University of North Carolina and then, you know, going and training with clubs in Europe and then moving to Portland. Like that's kind of when it all was like, yeah, this is like truly a legitimate option for me. This can be my life. This can be my career. Here's Moultrie with the worldie. We'd go to the mall or whatever. I'd have a ball with me at the mall. Like I'd bring one with me and, you know, that kid. Like that kid who, who brings it everywhere. <laughs> bring it in the movie theater. Bring it in. <laughs> so anyways, yeah, I think um, I think all that stuff helped, and yeah, I'm really glad I did it, and I think it contributed a lot. Shout out to your parents for letting that happen. A lot for of real, parents would I not know. let that happen. <laughs> <laughs> totally. My thought was just, I need to put this away so my team can have a chance to win this game, and it just gave me all the energy I needed to just step up there and put it right in. All those little things that didn't seem like a big deal at the time just truly contributed to, um, yeah, just how basically anytime I get the ball, any place on the field, just how comfortable I am during the game in any situation, I think it all contributed to that. Did you have a specific hero, a favorite player growing up? Being around like Lindsey Horan and Christine Sinclair and Tobin Heath, like kind of taking all the things um, that they're great at because those are players that have done what I want to do. You know, they've played in World Cups, played in Olympics, played at the highest levels in the world. And so, yeah, I was just trying to take all of those things that I thought that they were really good at. And it's like, how can I, you know, adapt that into my game and just take advantage of being around them every single day. And ever since I started playing, it's just been so easy for me to just be like, this is just what I want to do every day. Like I wake up and I'm like, when am I going to the field? Like, when am I, you know, and I finish practice. I'm like, hmm, maybe I'll go on the field again. You know, like it's, <laughs> it's where I want, I could live there, honestly. If that yeah. was a possibility, I would, I would be doing it. I don't see that changing anytime. Well, fantastic to hear from the Portland Thorns midfielder there and our Aaron West and former US international Laurie Lindsay join me now with more. Aaron, you did that interview. I mean, it was great to hear from her and just what the game means to her. She's become an absolute trailblazer in the league. What were your biggest takeaways from speaking with her? Just the absolute laser focus at that young of an age. I've, I've been fortunate to meet a lot of pros. I've, I've seen a lot of pros grow up. I've grown up with a lot of pros and not many of them at 10, 11, 12 years old were, were able to, to have that kind of laser dedication. I got to play pickup with her when she was like 10 or 11, and you could already tell she wanted to be a pro. She was probably going to be a pro, and that dedication, that that professionalism hasn't wavered at all. And it's crazy to see that in such a young player. <laughs> no, it absolutely is. But Laurie, it was such a long road for her to be able to play in the league. She signed with Portland when she was 15, but the NWSL at the time had a rule against signing players under 18. So she was only allowed for a while to play in non-league matches and, and was fighting with the league to get that rule changed, which has now since been lifted. And it feels like that has massively opened up other opportunities for women that don't want to go the traditional college route. Yes, yeah, certainly. And uh, first of all, I love this episode. Well done or interview. Well done, Aaron. Um, it's it's fun to see these young players be so excited, not want to get off the field and just like live for the game. So and as you mentioned, so mature at a young age. Um, but yes, I do think we're actually going to start to see this much more. I mean, we've seen uh, Jaden um, Shaw come into the, the league playing with San Diego Wave. You're, you're seeing Trinity Rodman as well, who um, Forgone um, or forgone, whatever the word is, <laughs> um, college. Maybe I need to go back to college. Um, but also, um, you're going to start to see this. I love this conversation because I had the privilege of calling you 20 games, World Cup games, and you know we're seeing younger players, especially in Europe, coming in and started being pros at 15 and 16. You could see the maturity of those players throughout the world. And now we just have a few players um, in the league. But I think Olivia Moultrie and her her drive and her journey is going to start to open up a pathway that's not only just going to be college, but we'll see more and more players decide, hey, I want to turn pro earlier, get into um, club teams, start having the ability to compete day in and day out and for 10 months of the 12-month year. Yeah, it's such a good point, Laurie, because we are seeing these players 
players, younger and lo younger, join the NWSL and being able to stay in the United States to play soccer professionally. Uh, Aaron, she said throughout the process, if you're good enough, you're old enough. And she really is a player, isn't she, that plays beyond her years, but the maturity off the pitch as well really stands out. Yeah, absolutely. She really, really does have the total package on the pitch. She she has the technical skill set, the athleticism, the vision, the the reading of the game off the pitch. She just seems like an ideal pro. She just wants to play soccer, rest, and get back to playing soccer. And there's not a lot of pros out there like that. I don't care how old they are. So she really just she seems like perfectly set to to have a fantastic path. Yeah, you can see her own expectations are, are so high for herself she's part of the u.s youth national team how high is her ceiling do you think laurie oh i think extremely high i mean she was just on the u20 women's world cup team um that competed in costa rica and i think those are always the steps and then a player as we've seen and erin has talked about her love and drive for the game her ceilings as high as she wants it to be i mean there's a there's ability to have a flash to her game but also only you utilize it when it's needed and i think that um shows that she plays well beyond her years but also has the ability to have um a connector type game. And so as we can see, continue to see her play in more and more games, play a part with the Portland Thorns, an organization I think um, allows her to succeed, um, you know, the sky's the limit for her. And I think we're going to see her for many, many years. Mm -hmm. And she talks a lot in she, that interview about the players that she looks up to, Aaron, but is there any player that she reminds you of when you're watching her? Probably the first one she mentioned, honestly. Uh, she's definitely her own player, but you can definitely tell she grew up watching Lindsay Horan. She has a bit of Tobin Heath in her, the trickiness. She's not, she doesn't have the phys physicality that Lindsay Horan has, but the way that she dribbles, the way that she moves, the way that she finds pockets of space, her vision of the game, her ability to strike the ball with both feet. She has a little bit of everything, and I think Lindsay Horan has a little bit of everything in that respect on the attacking side of things. So I, I do see a lot of Lindsay Horan in her. Yeah, she's surrounded by so much talent, isn't she, with the Portland Thorns, who currently sit fourth in the NWSL, but it is so tight. Only three points separate them in the league-leading San Diego Wave with five games to go in the regular season. Uh, Laurie, Aaron, it's so good to see you. Thank you so much for joining us. And for more on all women's football, the NWSL and the U.S. women's national team, then make sure you download and subscribe to the Attacking Third podcast with our very own Sandra Herrera and Lisa Roman to stay up to date with all the latest.